Well, in this episode, the car is packed down. It's kind of always packed down though, isn't it? But anyway, it's packed down to the, not just driving around town, but the... And Jenny's in the back and she's <laughs> a little on the nervous side, but she's had her happy pill. And we are in Rosarito and we're gonna drive up around Tijuana and head to the border crossing that our app tells us is the best one for this morning. It's a Sunday morning. And we waited a little bit uh, before leaving just because we hated to leave. And we like looking out of the ocean and, and seeing the porpoises, dolphin, uh, right offshore, just swimming along in pairs or uh, a whole bunch of them anyway. Uh, very cool, very cool. But we're on the northward trip. And so we'll show you the border crossing this morning. And we're headed to Pinion Pines in California. And I think you're going to like the video that we do on Pinion Pines in that area. Thanks for joining us on the journey. Tons of pottery here around Rosarito. We pass by stores that are like just wood furniture, uh, a lot of pagoda wood, big slabs of pagoda wood that you could build like a conference table out of. They're huge. When I say huge, I mean like six foot wide and 12 foot long slabs. A lot of pottery, painted pottery and unpainted pottery. I like Rosarito. It's a gorgeous uh, little town, a lot of food places, a lot of eclectic shopping that you can do. To say that we are sad to leave Baja California would certainly be an understatement. You may have already noticed the background music that I chose for this episode. When I was searching for the opening music, I typed melancholy into the search block. I chose that for a reason. Mexico for us has been a place to enjoy tranquility, peace, a slower pace of life, and each other. Leaving that in the rearview mirror this morning after six months on the peninsula feels a little bit sad somewhat unsettling. But leave we must, and we'll explain that in a future episode. And so, we look to what's before us, and not what we leave behind. Headed to the border crossing at Ote, Ote Mesa. and Ote Mesa, and I'm guessing that Ote Mesa is Ote. The road is a little bit bumpy. If RCA is looking for their dog, I think we found him. He's in Mexico. But he's not staring at the uh, record player. Now, younger generation, you won't get that reference there, but look up RCA dog on uh, the internet, find a picture of what that looked like population of Tijuana is around just under 2 million.
border crossing. We're going to probably pause the video here in a second because we looked on the app and it's a 100 minute wait to cross at this crossing. Um, some of the crossings you'll see where it's like a, a you know, two, three, four hour wait. I suspect the USA border crossing is kind of like run by Walmart perhaps and they have like 25 lanes but they only open one or two and then it all backs up and once it all backs up you're there for a long time. Well in the last hour we've moved a couple of feet I guess. It's slow moving. Your last chance to buy some things from Mexico, right here on the left in the median. Ladies come by selling churros. Now, I do wonder about the, the, the wonderful art pieces that you see there to the left on the yellow uh, jersey wall kind of thing. Uh, how many of those would you want in your house? How many of those would you want around the front door maybe? It's not our style, but I've seen some of people's houses that that was their style. And so if you're that person, that that is your style, here is where you need to come and you can probably get a great deal. I mean, everything. I see a Super Mario. I see uh, Jesus. I see a Brahma Bull. I see a truck that's going to come over and ram us uh, on the right. Let him do it because he's going to tear off the front of the Subaru if you don't. And we'll see what his license plate is when he gets by us. He is determined that you are going to let him in. And this guy here is telling us do not let him in. warm out here, 83 degrees Fahrenheit, but oh my gosh, this guy's got a rock in his hand, and he's coming over here, and he's going to, that guy's going to move the vehicle, or he's going to put that rock through his front windshield. Man, tempers are flaring. And the license plate is a California license plate, folks. California friends, I'm sorry. Thank you. Don't worry about it. I was just afraid he was going to tell us. Ay, 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 ay. Thank you, that for us. The good folks down in, that we run into in Mexico, time is not a big issue for them. They are more event oriented. And so, you know, there's patience. There's peacefulness, but well, once you get here close to the border, it's ay ay ay. Horns are blaring. These are the first horns we've heard in six months. Because you go down to Mexico and nobody blows the horn at anybody. And we've got uh, Super Mario. We've got Chucky. We've got. Uh, Hello Kitty, we got Yoda, Sonic, the Hedgehog, we got uh, the President of Mexico, we've got the Virgin of Guadalupe, uh, an extra Jesus or two, an angel, and the billboard up there is talking about insurance in Mexico, and we're going to do an uh, episode on that, because one of our viewers has requested an episode on how do you find your car insurance? How much does car insurance cost in Mexico when you're down here? And so we'll we'll talk about that because we're driving our own vehicle and we have to have car insurance wherever you go. You know? So we'll tell you all about that in an upcoming episode. This is the guy has got Kalatos uh, over here at the beach. You get your shrimp and your fish cut up in the in the cup. With, the Clamato juice and all in there. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
buying that while you're in line to cross the border here for something in the middle of the road is kind of like buying sushi from a gas station. I mean, it's, it's, cool. it's not cool, but this seems like a, a quick invitation to Montezuma's Revenge. I mean, and if, if the poops hit you and you're in line out here to cross the border, you're, you're up Poop Creek without a paddle. Just just say it. Two people come on there with a bag like that and you put your trash in it and then you give them some money to, to help take the trash away. So you don't see this throughout Mexico like this. All the poverty and people begging. You don't see, if you see anyone begging uh, down in Mexico, it's because they have no legs or they're so arthritically crippled up they can't work then they will be you know, asking for a little help. I kind of wish you would do like Universal Studios or Disney or some theme parks where you get to a certain point and you'd have a little sign that said, you know, you're, you're one hour from your ride or you're 30 minutes from your ride or whatever. Just kind of give you some, because without that, it's like, okay, how many more hours is it? That's the border. She's showing me something on our app there. It says, evidently, we're not too far from crossing from Mexico into the USA. You know, we were just talking about it. We're able to live pretty nicely. Gringos uh, who come down from North America, from, well, Mexico is North America, but who come down from the USA or Canada uh, to Mexico, they're able to live pretty well because they are retired. They have you know, retirement income. You know, if you don't have income, obviously you're gonna live in poverty wherever you are, Mexico, USA, Canada, whatever. And another thing that is kind of interesting when you think about it is there are folks here that don't have income that desperately want to work and will work for less wages just to have a job and have some income. When we cross the border in a few minutes, there's a strange thing that has happened and in the USA where there are those, a lot of them, of people who don't have income, yet they get assistance from the, from the government and such, that they don't want to work for less wages. They, they want a sign-on bonus. They want more money, more money, less hours. And you know, so many businesses are saying, hey, we need workers. We need people to work. And are finding it very hard to get people to work. It is strange, very strange. Drop us a comment. Let us know what your thoughts are on that, why that is. Your last chance here, you want to get a poster here on the left, I don't know if you can see it, of a skeleton barber doing your haircut. And this is barber shop up at the top. I guess that's for if you, uh, if you're a barber and you want to have a cool poster in your barber shop. Last chance to get the life-size figure of the Joker from Batman or Scarface poster or a leather pocketbook or a elephant with pink ears sitting up saluting you with his trunk. I don't know if you can see it just to the left of the Jersey wall. There's a guy with a rag wiping the windows down for a car and he'll get a few pesos for doing that. Can you imagine in the USA, you're in line at a traffic light and someone wants, you know, a quarter or 50 cents to wipe the dust off your vehicle or sell you something. And that is the way that guy makes a living. You gotta hand it to them here. They do want to work. These may be our last chance opportunities right here to get a pinata, a cement chihuahua, or a President Biden Chia Pet. That's strange. Evidently, he changed his mind. He, uh, After you've been through all this, you've been through all this, and he just, yeah, he was listening to a news report of a mass shooting or, you know, inflation rates or something about the USA, and he changed his mind and said, I ain't going. I'm going back. I just can't see anyone driving to Mexico, spending time in Mexico, and as you're getting ready to cross the border back into the USA, saying, you know what, there's a there's a ceramic Chucky doll. I have just got to get a ceramic Chucky doll. 
I mean, that's from a movie back in the 19, what, 80s? Maybe early 90s? There's Mario, though. Well, I mean, kids play the games and all that now, yeah. I guess, so they, they would know what that is. But, but Chucky? Really? The mass murdering little doll baby with red hair? Just can't see it. And it's kind of looking out the window here as we're crossing the bridge. Getting closer. That boy done got him a pig. Piggy's painted pretty. Yeah, Piggy is painted pretty. Now see, the guys selling the churros, if they want to really up their business a little bit, dust those churros with cayenne pepper sauce or cayenne dust. And then you can come back around like five minutes later and sell Coca-Colas at a much higher rate. Because I don't see anybody walking around selling Coca-Colas. You sell them some spicy hot churros and they'd be begging for a Coca-Cola. They might even drink a Diet Coke. We've been in line so long. And we're talking about like 10, over three hours. The Camry from Redlands, California in front of us, I feel like I, I know them. I've spent more time with them than I had than I have with lifelong friends. Hope you guys are doing okay up there. Met some great folks uh, in line. They were in the truck behind us, and a little earlier, I had to let Jenny out to use the potty. That was a couple of hours ago, and um, the fellow said uh, that they were already checking our videos out because they saw the back of the car with uh, Jenny Renee Travel Adventures on it, and. Now we're right close to the border, and his daughter wanted to pet Jenny, the poodle. And so we, we uh, that was cool. That was really cool. Good people, nice people. All right, we're getting closer. And the thing is, the U.S. border port of entry tells you, you can look on the apps there, and any border crossing, it'll tell you the quote, end quote, estimated wait time. You know, and it'll break it down for you. And if you've got global entry, or you've got century, or whatever, uh, it'll tell you what your wait time is going to be. So we looked before getting into the line and it said it would be approximately 100 minutes. So I got, you know, yes. I did pretty decent in math. That's like a little bit more than an hour and a half. And now it says 150 minutes on it. However, when we got in line, it was probably a hundred minutes, hour and a half. We've been in line now for a close to four hours. By the time we make it through, hopefully, crossing the border, it'll be four hours or a little more than four hours. Wow. Truth in advertising. Good job. Wow. I'm you know, amazed. Sarcasm noted. Hey, look, if, if you wanted me to buy you a Chucky or a painted pig, uh, let me know real quick because I think we're at close to the end of the supply chain here. So let me know. Drop a note down in the comments quickly so that I can get you one. Not sure what the three flags are. It looks like uh, the KFC bucket flag in the front and the American flag behind it. And I guess the Border Patrol flag Border Patrol. is the third flag. Not sure what the connection is with the uh, KFC bucket, but hey. It's like a yeah, I'm hungry now anyway. So <laughs> give me some. Pass the bucket. I want some chicken. Check us out on YouTube. Gene and Reen? Yes. Gracias. Where are you guys travel this time? Uh, all the way down to uh, Toto Santos. Nice. In uh, six months, all through the Baja. I was going to ask you if it was like a one leg trip or you guys stop in the. Stopped uh, <laughs> two months in Sonata, then a month in La Paz, and two months in Toto Santos. Visited a lot of little small towns all around. Nice. And then working our way back. Catch any of the Baja races while down there? No. Yeah. I'm too old for to watch <laughs> this. Have a good one, man. So you got two sentry lanes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ready lanes. A closed lane and only one for all traffic. Now, yep. Renee, you did the research. The ready lane, what does that mean? You have to have a RFID. Some permit like thing to use it. Sentry, you you have to be like the global, global transport, entry. Yeah. yeah, entry. But everybody in the car has to have it. 
not just one. So I have global entry into the USA. I have that, but you don't. Right. So I can go through it, but you'd have to walk to across walk. somewhere. Yeah, that would I work would really. Think. Yeah, then, then they have divorce uh, lawyers set up on the other side. Yeah, they had cheap billboards that there oh, for there. divorce. Yeah, because yeah, so. if I put you out for you to walk across the border, that's what would probably happen. Let's see. So there's only one lane that's open for all main traffic. So it's really they're encouraging you to do to what pay. is don't do the cheap way. Don't do the cheap way to pay yeah. and do some kind of a ready lane thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, because they're if you notice when they go through the century lane, they're they're showing a card at the camera. Oh, so a lot faster. Well, our friends that were behind us mm -hmm. in the Toyota Tundra. They've gone. They're, yeah, they passed us a minute ago and got into a ready lane and moved on through. So it does work. Handing Renee the passports and, of course, a card to encourage them to check out our channel. Yeah, let me hold a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to declare? No. Or what's going on? No, we we retired two years ago and just tra and sold everything and just travel. And uh, we spent six months down in Mexico, La Paz, Todos Santos, Ensenada, and uh, headed back to see family in Virginia. And he's. Now you let her go and him not let you go. It's just a big mass confusion out here. Yeah. Nothing to direct traffic. Nope. Okay, I guess we are in the USA. Because the sign says, Welcome to California A. And if we had time, we'd go out and see Uncle Jed. He lives in Beverly Hills. My reference to the Clampets for those old enough to know who I'm talking about. Alright folks, this concludes this episode of Gene and Renee Travel Adventures. Thank you so much. Hit the like button, share it. Uh, drop us some comments. Let us know what you thought about that ordeal. That, that This is a misadventure. But let us know about what you thought about that. Uh, in our next episode, we're going to be in Pinion Pines up in the... Uh, what's that called? Renee? Mountain Center. In Mountain Center. And it uh, should be really cool. And looking forward to going there and showing you what's around. Don't forget, we have another channel called Take a Breath. Go over there. I'll put a link in the description section. Go over there and subscribe and help us to grow that channel. All right, friends. Dios te bendiga, mi amigos.